Hi, everybody. This is Deborah and Lolly once again with our book talks. And, uh, you know, just as it was difficult with the asynchronous video, because we're covering two genres, it was painful to cut this list down to just 10 poetry books and 10 uh, traditional literature books. But, um, but Deborah is planning to do a video where she talks about poetry. So she'll be able to talk about a few more books then too, I hope. Um, all right, so there is a PDF. There will be a link to it below this video on the page and a bin of books in the JCRL starting Tuesday morning. Uh, and the books uh, that we talk about will be in the same order that they're in in the handout. So uh, starting with traditional literature. Um, so the first book I'm gonna talk about is this one. Can you guess my name? This is an anthology put together by Judy Sierra. And in some ways it's, it's very similar to the Cinderella um, that you read for today, uh, for this week, um, in that it has variations of the same sorts of stories. So if you look at the table of contents on this one, you can see that they're taking um, a few different story types and they've got um, three of each story type, um, each one from a different place. And uh, so I'll just give you an example of how this sort of thing works. This is one of the Rumpelstiltskin type stories, um, which is the, you know, can you guess my name uh, refers to uh, that sort of story. And um, just to give you a sense so that, you know, as often as the case with uh, folk tales, there's a very kind of folk art look to the illustrations. Um, and the way this one starts, I won't be reading from each of these, but uh, I've talked a little bit about how uh, each storyteller has uh, their own way of uh, telling a story. And in this case, this is uh, how a job of the tortoise tripped the hippopotamus. Uh, it's from Nigeria, specifically Yoruba. And the text begins, the story floats in the air, it hovers. Where will it land? It falls upon Ijapa, the tortoise. He is small, yet he tricked the powerful hippopotamus. So uh, first of all, we, you know, this particular way of beginning a story is uh, something that that particular storyteller that it was collected from did. And we know right away, it's gonna be a trickster story. Um, so, and oh, and this is, uh, as you can probably tell, this would be for the older uh, end of um, elementary school. Lots of text, just a few illustrations. Um, <laughs> next up, we have a collection of tall tales uh, collected by Zora Neale Hurston, uh, who many of you will know from her fiction, uh, but professionally she was uh, a, uh, uh, you know, she professionally did go around collecting uh, stories from uh, different African-American commu communities. Um, this one is illustrated by Christopher Myers, son of Walter Dean Myers. And so, as you know, tall tales are, uh, in this case, they're all kind of uh, funny and very extreme. Uh, let's see, can I actually read this? No, it's backwards for me. Um, Deborah, can you read that from there? Yes, what is the tallest man you've ever seen? The tallest man I've ever seen could, oh, could stand knee deep in hell. I can't read the bottom, <laughs> sorry. And, uh, and <laughs> shake hands with Gabriel. <laughs> So, so again, it's, uh, and, and you know, the title is uh, Lies and Other Tall Tales. And as, as you're probably aware, uh, there are definitely cultures in which any kind of a story is called a lie and uh, is kind of forbidden. Um, but of course she is relishing the fact that these are all lies, all of these stories. Um, the next one on the list is Lon Popo, uh, collected by Ed Young. And um, this is uh, a, um, uh, a Red Riding Hood story from China. And uh, Ed Young just has this, uh, he uses many different styles. In this case, it's pastels. Oh, is a very bold sensibility um, with his art. And so you can see he's playing around with panels um, and just really getting right in there with that wolf. Look at those teeth there and those uh, three little children. Uh, in this case, uh, yeah. so Lon Popo, very good one, uh, scary. 
Uh, the next one is not scary at all. It's called Love and Roast Chicken. This is a story uh, from the Andes in South America. Uh, it's about a guinea pig named Kui. Kui means guinea pig. Um, and uh, it says it's a trickster tale from the Andes mountains. And uh, in this case, uh, there is a Kui, the guinea pig, and a coyote. And um, um, this is the, and, and so what you can you get a sense of the illustrations. Um, there's very, very bold illustrations and the expressions on the characters' faces are terrific. Um, in this case, the, the trickster, the guinea pig, um, uh, instead of, he didn't have time to go run and hide. And so he just puts his hands up and uh, tells the coyote that he is uh, holding up this rock. And that if he lets go, the rock is gonna fall on him. Um, and uh, he's, Kui says, uh, says, I've been here all day and I need to go to the bathroom. Please, will you hold the rock for just a moment? And so, of course, this is how he gets uh, his nemesis to just stay put holding the rock up while he can run away. Um, next up we have, uh, oh, Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters. We seem to be sort of changing mood with each book. Uh, this is uh, a book uh, collected and illustrated by John Steptoe, uh, who's one of those illustrators who uses lots of different styles depending on the book he's doing. Um, this is a Cinderella kind of story, um, but it's a little different in that it's about two sisters. Uh, one is nice and good and the other uh, uh, is not so nice. And um, you get a sort of get a sense of the two sisters here. And one thing I love is that John Steptoe had uh, an adolescent daughter at the time. And he said that uh, she was the model for both sisters. And it was appropriate because she, he never knew when she was going to be nice and when she was going to be not so nice. But just give you a sense of how gorgeous these illustrations are here. Um, and in this story, it's a story about a prince who is looking for someone to marry. And, uh, and of course, he, he meets both sisters. And as you can probably guess, he ends up marrying the nice one. Uh, here is a really famous collection the People Could Fly, <clears throat> which is um, collected and retold by Virginia Hamilton, um, a multi-award winning children's book author, uh, and illustrated by Leo and Diane Dillon. Uh, again, a, a, a great illustrating team. And uh, it's a whole collection um, with some illustrations in black and white. Um, the book is divided into sections. The first ones are uh, the Brewer Rabbit, uh, type of uh, stories which were first collected by Joel Chandler Harris, uh, but in Virginia Hamilton's retellings, of course, all that disturbingly racist stuff in the Harris versions are, uh, of course, fixed and retold. And um, the end section are uh, specifically stories about uh, uh, being enslaved. And The People Could Fly is uh, one of many trickster tales uh, that became popular in the American South. And uh, in this case, there's this magical element uh, where the people are able to fly away to freedom. Uh, they did, uh, there was another version of this book, which just took that last story that people could fly and illustrated the whole thing in color as a picture book. Um, another departure. Uh, here we go with our very traditional kind of Northern European, or in this case, Southern European Italian. Uh, this is a Rapunzel that is um, <clears throat> uh, written and illustrated by Paul Zielinski, another person who illustrates many different styles. Um, he may be best known for a book he did in a much more cartoony style, uh, The Wheels on the Bus. It's a, a, a book with you know, where the wheel, you can make the wheels turn and the windshield wipers move. It's one of those toy and movable books. And this, of course, is a totally different style and very much uh, based on <clears throat> the sort of northern Italian uh, architecture and art. And uh, one more drastic change, uh, stories like Red Riding Hood, which can be very serious. Uh, and of course, Red Riding Hood is one of those stranger danger stories. Um, 
and and yet James Marshall finds a way uh, finds the, some humor in this, and uh, and as always his his characters are just to die for, <laughs> in this case literally. So you, you get a sense that Little Red Riding Hood is a, a little maybe a little bit dense and just a little too happy, and there's the wolf being quite uh, sneaky. Um, so very funny. Obviously, uh, it has a happy ending uh, as opposed to some Red Riding Hood tales in which uh, multiple people end up dying or being regurgitated. Um, this is, uh, I want to tell you about some uh, uh, fractured folk tales. So, and uh, the fractured tales are ones where um, a traditional tale is retold uh, in a very different way. So here is one which is a Goldilocks story that has been completely updated. And in this case, it's a, a, this is a very uh, upper middle class family of bears. And um, Goldilocks uh, is, uh, you know, probably homeless. Uh, so there, and the Goldilocks pages until they all meet are very monochromatic art, uh, very stark. And then the, the bears there, you can see them you know, talking about their jobs, both, both the bear parents work and, you know, they're, they're, uh, you know, if this was written nowadays, I'm sure they would have had iPhones, you know. Um, so that's Me and You by Anthony Brown. And then another one, this one is maybe familiar to a lot of you. Uh, this is John Sheska and Elaine Smith. And this is the true story of the three pigs. And in this one, it's narrated, you can see it's by a wolf, and uh, basically the wolf is explaining that he was framed and uh, he had no intention of, uh, of harming the three pigs. The fact is that uh, he had some allergies and the whole thing was about a sneeze and it was all a huge misunderstanding. And there are little hints that uh, he's actually telling this from jail. There he is in his striped outfit. Um, and that's it for folk tales. I can't believe it went that fast, but there they go. So, and now the poems are mostly Deborah. I'll do a couple of the poetry ones. So Deborah- That's a hard act to follow, Lolly. You did quite a lot of humor injected in there with, the, with those last few books, which I enjoyed a lot. Um, so, so up first with poetry is a book called All the Small Poems and 14 More. And this is part of a collection actually that has been done called Small Poems by Valerie Wirth. And it's illustrated by Natalie Babbitt, um, who most of you probably know better for her writing, um, such as Tuck Everlasting and Search for Delicious. So she actually does these amazing illustrations, these uh, ink illustrations. And I'll show you um, one of the poems. This is Aquarium. Oh, let's see, I could probably do it better from this side. Goldfish flash, gold and silver scales, they flick and slip away under green weed, but round brown snails stick to the glass and stay. And here's an image of that. And, and what's really special about this, what this book is, is a collection of poems about the natural world, about um, plants, about animals, about everyday objects. I'll show you some others and won't read them all. Um, but they're these sweet, wonderful poems and these illustrations that Natalie Babbitt does just accent them so beautifully. They work together so perfectly that I feel with this book, each poem is like a, a precious little gem. I, I think this is such a peaceful and wonderful book to read. Here's, here's one more, Roadside. You can see these wonderful just glimpses into, into daily life. So this is one I couldn't more highly recommend. I think you're up next, Lolly, with Amber. Yes. Um, so Amber was brave, Essie was smart by Vera B. Williams, uh, who also illustrates this. And um, this is a collection of poems and uh, put all together, they tell the story of these two sisters. And um, as you read, you begin to understand what their life is like. And um, things are not all perfect. For, there's Vera B. Williams. Isn't she great? Um, so uh, things aren't perfect for them. And you don't, you don't learn specifically what's really going on. But you know that their father is away somewhere. 
and they miss him terribly. And wherever he's away, they can't go visit him. Um, you never really know, is he away for a job? Maybe he's incarcerated. It's not made completely clear. Um, but the sort of things, you know, some of these are longer, some of them are shorter. Here's one I love. Um, I'm not gonna be able to hold it up and read it at the same time, but uh, basically it's called Daddy Song. And it just goes, Daddy, sadly, Daddy, badly, Daddy, bigly, Daddy, mindly, Daddy, whenly, Daddy, really, really, soonly. So it just, it's so much emotion packed into these just very, uh, very well chosen words. Yeah. So, Deborah says. Beautiful. Next is a book called Knock at a Star. And this is a child's introduction to poetry. It's a really wonderful anthology um, that was put together by XJ Kennedy and Dorothy Kennedy. Um, and what I think the Kennedys do so well in this book is they took, they take a look at poetry and make it very accessible to children. They ask things like, what, what do poems do? Poems that can make you smile, that tell stories, that send messages, that share feelings, um, that make you wonder about things. And what's inside a poem? You know, they look at poetry with images, with music, that lyrical language, with beats, with wordplay limericks, takeoff songs, all of these things. It's really just a, a beautiful and simple look. I'll show you one of my favorites that I remember looking at when I was looking at the moon. Um, and this is called Wind and Silver. Greatly shining, the autumn moon floats in the thin sky and the fish ponds shake their backs and flash their dragon scales as she passes over them. That's Amy Lowell. So that's just a really lovely one. We used to have to study the moon in one of the classes that I took with Professor Eleanor Duckworth. We used to look at the moon every night and I remember that poem struck me because it just captured something about the moon. So that's Knock at a Star. And I think I also now am up also with Mirror Mirror, which is a very different kind of book. This is, um, this is actually by Marilyn Singer and the illustrations are by jo uh, Jose. I think her name is Massey. And what Singer has done here, along with Massey's illustrations, is to create um, a collection of what are really um, that are that are um, story. Uh, what am I looking for here, Lolly? These are ner not nursery rhymes, but they are a book of verse of stories like Cinderella and Snow White and the Little Red Riding Hood. So what is the word I'm looking for? Well, folk tales. In here? Folk yeah. tales. Yes. Reversible poems based on folk tales. Based yes. on folk tales. And, and what Singer calls them is reverso. So rather than get tongue-tied, I'll just show you one of them, which I think is particularly good. Um, it's called Cinderella's Double Life. And what this is, is a poem that is read both forward and backward. And it has to uh, remain the same. I think that the um, punctuation can be changed, but otherwise it cannot be. So I'll show you the image while, while I read this. Cinderella's double life. Isn't life unfair? Stuck in a corner while they're waiting for a chance. With the prince, dancing waltz after waltz at the ball. I'll be shining these shoes till the clock strikes midnight. That's one perspective. The other is, Till the, till the clock strikes midnight, these shoes, I'll be shining at the ball, dancing waltz after waltz with the prince while they're waiting for a chance, stuck in a corner. Isn't life unfair? So two very different perspectives on the same tale of Cinderella. And um, it's an interesting kind of concept and one that children might be interested in trying. I think it's it looks easy, but I don't think yeah. it would be because it has it's to work not easy. Both forward and backward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the first line of one half is the last line of the next half and it goes on like that. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I'm next. Uh, Eloise Greenfield, there is a poet to know about. Uh, Night on Neighborhood Street is one of her uh, her books. 
Um, and this one is illustrated by uh, Dan Spivey Gilchrist. And um, this book is, uh, it's a bit older. Um, well, this says 1991. I, I have a feeling, yeah, I guess that's about right. It was a Corinne Scott King honor book. And um, one of the things I love about this, and you know, one of the things that it, it, there is to love about uh, poems that are written specifically for children um, is that the poet is able to sort of write in that voice, that perspective of looking at the world as a child looks at the world. And in this case, uh, Night on Neighborhood Street, it's all about uh, a particular neighborhood, uh, city neighborhood. And in this one, I was just um, showing you that the title is The Cellar, and it is actually about the drug dealer on the corner. Um, and, uh, you know, that he, he uh, when the seller comes around carrying in his many pockets packages of death, all the children go inside. They see behind his easy smile. They know his breath is cold. They turn their backs and reach for warmth and life. So really thought provoking. Um, and, you know, thinking about windows and mirrors, this is a mirror for, for so many children. Um, now we move from uh, the city to the country. Um, this is one of uh, several books by um, uh, Joyce Sidman, a poet uh, who uh, specializes in writing for children. And um, these are, this, each of her books are uh, a book full of poems with the same, with something very much in common. And um, in this case, they all take place, uh, they're sort of about animals that, uh, that live near the water. And um, this, uh, these books are, are illustrated by various people, but they, they try to get uh, these people who do really great, um, uh, they're printmaking, hand colored prints. And um, you just get a sense of how bold this is. And, uh, you know, in the, the article you read by Susan Lemke about purposeful poetry, um, you know, this is the kind of book you might think, uh, you might think twice about because it seems as if, you know, these, these poems were written on purpose, you know, for schools, et cetera, et cetera. But she is really good. And another thing that's a little unusual about these is that she not only has the poem, but then there's also a little bit of information uh, about the animals that she's talking about. And let's see, am I next? No, no I you're next. That one is so beautiful though. I really love the water boatman. Um, the next one is very different. This one, can you see that cover? This is called The Undefeated. And this is a powerful poem by Kwame Alexander. It's illustrated by Kadir Nelson. And what this book really is, is a love letter. And I would say a tribute to black America, to grit, to courage, to perseverance, to determination, survival, success. Um, it's, it's quite wonderful. I'll show you some of it just so you can get a sense of the way this text works with the, um, with the images. This is for the unforgettable, the swift and sweet ones who hurtled history and opened a world of possible. The ones who survived America by any means necessary. And the ones who didn't. Now that's powerful because there's just a white page. This is for the undeniable, the ones who scored with chains on one hand and faith in the other. And it goes on, but it gives you a sense of the beauty of both that verse that Alexander shares with us and, and the way that those images um, convey the story as well. And it's, it's about both those who are, who are well known throughout history and those who are unknown, but who were part of this story of our nation. So, um, and you, as you can see, it's, it's just decorated with a, a Caldecott medal, a Newbery honor, the Coretta Cott Scott King. So it is, has gotten a lot of acclaim. Beautiful book. Is that, that's Kadir Nelson illustrations? It is, yes, that's Kadir Nelson. Yes. And I think, let's see, Lolly. You've got Versal oh, next. Yes. Locomotion, okay, is that next? Yes. Next, so, yeah. 
So the next one is Locomotion. And this is a verse novel actually by Jacqueline Woodson, who was up until fairly recently, um, the children's poet laureate. So that's something important to know about her. She's an extraordinary poet and writer. And in this book, she tells the story of a young boy, a fifth grader named Lonnie Collins Motion, who lost his parents at seven in a fire. And at this stage in his life in fifth grade, his teacher is teaching the class about poetry and writing poetry. And the, this makes um, verse particularly well suited, obviously, for this story, because it's a transformative experience for him. Verse really is shaping the way he is moving forward and seeing the world thereafter. And Malali, you may have other things to say about it. I would just recommend this one. Um, and I may share some of it when I do the poetry talk, but this is this is more of a, a novel. I mean, you're looking at each page is really his voice and poetry can conveys his experience um, as he's moving through a, a, a time of understanding, a time of grief and a time of understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, uh, a lot of you might know a book called Love That Dog by Sharon Creech, um, mm -hmm. which got a lot of attention but I do think that locomotion is just more depth to it. Um, and Love That Dog is such a quick read, but so is locomotion. And that's one of the benefits of poetry because there's all this space around it. So that book goes by really quickly. And so for anyone who's a little bit intimidated uh, by reading books with a lot of text, um, yeah, this, this, this is the sort of book that can be really appealing. Um, am I next? Yes, I am. Are. So, um, of course, there are so many books of Mother Goose poems. And, um, oh, good. Yes, you've got, you've got this. I've got one, too. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. No, but that's great. I, I just discovered mine later. Um, so, um, uh, Nina Cruz, who put this together, uh, daughter of Donald Cruz, who wrote uh, School Bus and, um, oh, Freight Train. Um, Lots of books that I, I bet any of you who grew up in the U.S. will recognize. Um, and uh, she is a photographer. And so she, uh, these are just, the text is, you know, the basic nursery rhymes that uh, a lot of us know. And some of them are illustrated by uh, just straightforward photos. Uh, but they're all, you know, of course, updated because, you know, they're photos. She's taking photos in her neighborhood, uh, which is Brooklyn. And uh, this is, there was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. When she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. So, you know, cutting the hair on her Barbie. Uh, and then there are others uh, in which uh, you, she's clearly used uh, Photoshop to very, uh, so this is uh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Um, <laughs> so of course that is, uh, you know, in your neighborhood store, some pickled peppers on the shelf. And there's Peter Piper climbing up the shelf, a la Photoshop. Um, and then uh, I like to, there's a whole other category of books, uh, which are books that, that sort of deal with wordplay. And again, there's so many great ones I wanted to show you, but here's one that's, that's quite different because it involves math. Um, and so this is uh, Mathematicals by Betsy Franco, illustrated, illustrated by Stephen Salerno. And um, Deborah, I don't have a copy of it myself, but Deborah will show you uh, a spread. So you get the idea that this is, uh, these are a combination of poetry and math. So there's the one that's sphere plus sphere plus sphere equals snowman. And so some of them are quite simple like that and others are uh, a little more complicated uh, in terms of their, their math. So, you know, this wouldn't be a book for the very, very youngest. Um, but, you know, I would say second grade, third grade, fourth grade, um, yeah, <laughs> croak, 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 plus ribbit, um, what is it, a knot of toads? Yeah, I mean, it's just, of toads. yeah, it's, it's delightful, it's really Perfect. delightful. It's fun. It's a lot of fun, yep. And that's, wow, that is our entire list. That's um, good. In this video, I showed you the, um, Iona and Peter Opie, um, uh, their scholarship on folk tales, and they also have done one on nursery rhymes. 
So if any of you are interested in that, uh, another big tome uh, that you could read if you are so inclined. So I'm hoping this one is less than an hour, but we'll find out when we hit save. <laughs> It'll definitely be better than the my, my very, very, very long asynchronous video that I did the first time around. Anyway, um, that's it. And yeah, see you on Monday. Thanks, friends. See you in class. See you in class. Bye.